Yes, you want to have <laughs> Yeah, it's fun. Not a lot of classwork, so a whole lot of hands-on, so can't be too mad. Right now, I'm working on a climbing robot. Has to climb up a platform. You climb up the platform, you get A. So let's hope I ain't work. But my dad's an elect electrician, so I wanted to be an electrician. I like to be able to express my ideas and I also like to be able to make things and then have them work, have them function. So it's cool to be able to have a class where you can have an idea and then create it and make it work and do something. I've considered doing the third year. I'm already in my second year, which a lot of people don't do, but considering how much I enjoyed it the first time, I figured, you know, I might as well do the second time. But I have I'm probably not going to do the third year, but this is something that I'm going to continue doing outside of this class. Since this is pretty much just a class for me to express my ideas and my creativity, I'll just, whenever I have another idea or something else that I think of or want to make, I'll go ahead and make it. And this class is also pretty useful for, let's say you have like minor things in your house that you need to get fixed, like let's say that there's a switch that's broken or something. You get a 3D printer and then you design a new switch and you just print it out and there you go. You don't have to go to the store and like check for if it matches the sizes, if it does this or that. You can just make what you need right there on the spot. Currently, I'm in the middle of two projects. I'm making an automatic light switch. It's something that you hook up right next to your light switch in your room or wherever. And then you have a remote and you can click the button on the remote and it'll flick your light off for you. And I'm also working on a RGB laser. It is basically, uh, it's a rainbow laser. So ordinary laser pointers, you can have either red, green, or blue. But if you combine all the lasers together and then fluctuate how much power each of them has, you can create any color you want. So this right here, this bundle of wires and things, this is the automatic light switch. And it doesn't look like a whole lot because I don't have the gear mechanism set up here and I don't have it inside of its casing. But you can kind of see if I connect the battery to it, there's a little light that turns on. And this is the, this is kind of the brain of the whole thing. This is what gives all of these different wires the signals that they need to do what they're supposed to do. And this little kind of black circle here is an infrared sensor and this is an infrared remote. So when I press the power button on here and aim it at that dot, you'll hear a little noise and that gear will spin. And so, in theory, that gear should rotate a mechanism that would flick your light up and down. And it reverses and switches sides each time so that if it's down, it'll flick up, and if it's up, it'll flick down. But this, these two things right here are the first two kind of circuits that I made for the light switch. And inside of here will be the brain of the light switch once I get that all wired up. This is the power casing, so I have a 9 volt battery and you can see the model that I printed, um, which is now this. Um, and I put a 9 volt in here for reference, but you can see that this 9 volt fits nice and snug inside of there. And that's the whole goal. We want to have a power supply for the laser pointer that will be replaceable. So there will be a little cap on here that you can take on and off and replace the battery whenever you need to. And then the rest of it will be printed and put on top of the power bank. I, I like to look as a facilitator where the, it's a student-centered program where the students come in and they have projects to work on. I help them figure out solutions to their projects that they're working on. And, um, help them with uh, the parts and things like that that they need. So I help manage the classroom as they're working on different products. And if you come in here at any time, you should see a lot of different projects going on where the kids, um, one of them might be working on an underwater robot, maybe a second year is working on that, and the first year might be working on a robot to do like a robot climb that we're doing now. Yeah, I look at electronics robotics as a class that's 
really designed to give students a head start and an opportunity to explore careers in engineering. Um, when the students come in, they get some of the basics and, um, that they would if they take the first engineering class at a four-year school or a two-year school. So it gives them an opportunity to see firsthand and apply the skills that they're learning in their other content classes. There's a lot of math and science involved in this class, so it gives them that opportunity. So when a student um, comes through the class, they really will rotate through several classes that they might take in college or at the community college, so they get uh, some experience in those areas. And that helps them make informed decisions about things that they like to do and gives them that experience and helps build the confidence um, as they go on. So if the student gets done with the class and they feel that um, this is something that they like, they have a great head start, or maybe they find that you know a particular area that they didn't like and they might want to go a different direction. Yeah, I've always uh, loved, I, I worked in industry for a few years and I really wanted to work with students. I love working with students and it just is a good fit that I can work with technology in this class and with the students. So I really enjoy that. And uh, one of the things I like the most is just hearing stu students come back after the program to see how their experiences in here help give them a head start or help them decide what they wanted to do. Or just as important, maybe just help them decide what direction they didn't want to go so they could focus in on the areas that they did uh, want to do. <laughs> I've always had like a lot of interest in engineering and building things and I thought that the electrical, uh, the electronics and the robotics just sort of like work together. You know I've always been interested in electronics and robotics and so I think both of those put together in one class just really caught my attention. I was really interested in robotics and like the uh, whole electronic and robotics aspect of it and I really want to go into like mechanical engineering so I figured that this would be like perfect for that and uh, I find like this stuff super interesting and fun so it's uh, it's very self-driven so you do a lot of the work yourself you sort of find your own pace for what you do and so it's a lot of fun uh, right now we're working on a robot that is trying to climb uh, like gaps on wood and like so it's trying to get up like a two inch gap, a four inch gap, six inch gap, we're adding like an elevator on it. So we're basically have like freedom to build whatever robot we want and like how to engineer it and design it and modify it and whatever. So it's trying to like complete certain challenges right now. It's a little expensive to get started up. But if I, if I have like the extra money and I'm able to uh, afford it myself, I definitely would do it outside of class with the knowledge that I've gained here. We had to build a robot that had to do like submerge underwater and then pick up like teas off the bottom of the pool and then bring them back up. That was really fun, like interesting to do. You wanna see a magic trick? Yep. Watch this. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. We are heading down to the Kalamazoo Central Pool to submerge my robot and kind of show it off and let it swim around. We're off to see the wizard. <laughs> There's gonna be like random clips of me sprinting down the hallway. We're off to see the wizard. We'll go see if that door is open.
There we go. <laughs> Just one of the lenses. Okay. Set that there. Go scooch back. Let's give it a good. Let's see. Did we have the battery behind it? Was that what kept it up? Well, I guess as long as it works, it's what really matters. All right, power is on. Yep, it's good. I can see you guys. Not anymore. <laughs> Mission failed. We'll get him next time. <laughs> Come on, I can see the surface. We're so close. We're climbing. We're climbing. It's on the surface. <coughs> oh no. Oh no. 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 <laughs> That'll be kind of difficult because this thing doesn't like to go up. Oh, it doesn't go up. Yeah, well, oh, it no, does, we're good. But not very well. Do this. I'm going to unplug this. It was? Or was it? Oh. Interestante. Here. Wire's not hot, but that black part in particular. Yeah, it is. Um. I don't know. Probably a 5 a.m. <laughs> Did you get it? For the clout. Alright. Oh, it's a nice cool breeze. That's what I'm talking about. I heard I'm doing yoga. And they're they're doing yoga. Yes, they are. Look, they're sitting on the floor and stretching. Well, the goal, the initial robots that everybody makes have digital speed control, which means they're they're either on or off, full power or no power. 
Our goal was to make an underwater robot with variable speed control. So that way you can, the joysticks, the harder you push them forward, the faster it goes. And we did that. We had a lot of issues while doing that. We also wanted to attach a claw to grab the T rather than just scoop it up. But we got the variable speed control down, but just not on every command that we wanted. So we wanted to be able to go up and down and left and right, forward, backward, and so on and so forth. But something was wrong with our motor controllers, so we were only able to go up versus up and down, so that's obviously not the best thing in the world. But it still works. You can still grab the T. You can, on occasion, bring it up to the top of the water, but I would still call it a success. So essentially it's a laser pointer, but it can be any color. It's a rainbow and it'll cycle through the rainbow and just you can do whatever you want with it pretty much. You can make any color, you can make any mode. So I'll already ask the question, uh, what project are you currently working on? Right now I'm in the middle of two different projects. I'm working on... You can close that door if you want. I don't know how much it'll improve it, but... You guys know what this is? Nah. <laughs> it's called a heater, and let's say you have like plastic or something, let's say you want to insulate something, you can wrap plastic around it and blow heat on it and it'll shrink down. <laughs> you just took our jobs. I took your job? Oh. Why did you take their jobs? They're just hardworking Mexican fellows.